Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Dell Inspiron 13 7000 and the best way to describe it, it is Dell's answer to the widely popular yoga series from Lenovo. As you can see, we have the tablet mode, we also have tent mode, we have the stand mode and we also have the tablet mode. So pretty much the same, but is it better or is it as good? We will see right up in my review. So let's damn it. As always, let's begin with the design and build quality and start off with the ports and buttons first. On the left hand side we have the Kensington lock, port for the charging, full size HDMI, two USB 3.0, one of them is always on, headset jack, one of the two stereo speakers. On the front there is nothing besides this charging LED. On the right hand side we see the power button, volume rocker, second stereo speaker, full size USB 2.0, full size SD card reader and here we have the silo for the capacitive stylus. One thing I have to mention, the power button and the volume rocker are too flush in my opinion and it doesn't really feel that great because it's hard to find them at night, but it is okay after all. As for the materials used, as you can see, it does flex a bit and even when you open the device you will see one thing, the display does wobble and you can even, as you can see it a bit closer, you can break it out of here. It does click in, it is no real issue and I just noticed it while recording, but I wanted to mention it. Overall though it feels quite nice, it is quite okay in terms of weight with 1.7 kilograms. It is a little bit heavier than the competition but still, therefore it looks very nice, very elegant and one thing I really like are the rounded corners here which makes it very comfortable when typing. And that's what leads me to the keyboard. If we take a closer look at the keyboard now, you can see the keyboard has a nice layout, it has two level backlit, it has a function lock. And it overall it works quite nice, but it is not at the top of the bunch here from all the competitors out there. The key travel itself is okay and the feedback and resistance feels also nice, but for some reason it just can't compete in the overall typing experience compared to the best ones out there, but I can't really narrow it down. As for the touchpad itself, it works nice, it works reliable and solid, but it also doesn't deliver the best experience. It feels a little bit shallow. And it is also slightly rough to the touch, but therefore not sticky or slippery. It works okay, but it is not the best one. So in overall, I have to say, one thing I really like is the really smart port and button placement. All the things are there and we also get one USB more than we usually get. This is a quite, thing, a quite nice thing and also everything else is nice. If you can see the ventilation is on the back and in most cases it didn't get blocked or anything. We have Nicely used materials, not overall premium though, but it feels quite okay for the money you are paying. But therefore the design is very smart, logical. The build quality though could be a little bit better. Same as on most other mid-range to high-end ultrabooks, we get on 13.3 inch IPS display with a resolution of 920 by 1080 and an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. Out of the box it came with a scaling of 150%, things looked a little bit blurry and off to me, I switched to 125% and then text and everything else appeared to be sharper, but after all it is not the sharpest screen out there. If we check the brightness, the lowest setting in my opinion in certain situations still could be a little bit too bright and the brightest setting is good enough for indoors, but outdoors I don't think it will be quite enough and then there's also the glare hurting you even more. As for the whites, they are quite nicely balanced, tonal okay, slightly more on the warmer side, but what you can also see on the video already, the sides get definitely dimmer and this diminishes the overall qualities a little bit more than they would have to. Otherwise blacks are nice and deep, don't lose any details or anything else, so nothing to complain here. Colors at first glance look nice, accurate, quite vibrant and vivid, but you will notice quite often that they will look a little bit dull, washed out and especially videos look more flat than I'm usually used to it. Otherwise, we can see the colors are quite okay after all. As for the viewing angles, these are quite stable, no real issues here, but you will lose a little bit more brightness and contrast as you do on the very best ones. So. In overall, all I have to say is the display is a very good one, but it just can't compete with the very best out there. We have just sharper screens, more vivid screens in overall, but for the price you're paying, it is still a great display after all. Before I'm going to talk more about the sound qualities of the speakers, let's start off with a demo first. 
Hello everyone and welcome to the Damn Jam podcast episode 5. It is another solo episode and I'm really sorry for that, Jamar just didn't have the time, but I did and I wanted to deliver you with another episode. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on the sound here? And with max audio turned on and I would definitely recommend to leave it on because otherwise the maximum volume won't be enough and the overall sound experience won't be the best. But using max audio on and with the right settings you will get a really nice experience. The maximum volume will be quite nice as you could maybe hear already on the demo. The bass is there, a little bit of a hint for an ultra book, quite okay. The mids are very nice because voices have a nice rich body to them, which is really nice if you watch a lot of YouTube videos and so on. Treble is a little bit on the weaker side because it is clean, but it is not really crisp and clear. And that's my main complaint because the highs are a little bit too muffled on my end. Because you can maybe boost them a little bit in the max audio settings, but you won't ever get the really crisp and clear sound in overall. The good thing here is we have stereo, even though side facing speakers and deliver and they deliver a real nice stereo immersion. But overall it is a really good sound, but with the muffled thing as a setback. Otherwise it would be really great. Let's continue with the performance and start with the weakest part here, which would be the spinning hard drive. It is audible, but that's not the issue. The issue is it is a quite slow one. It is definitely not on an SSD level, but not even on faster spinning hard drive level. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, if we check modern UI apps or a PDF first, as you can see here, a PDF runs absolutely buttery smooth, really fast in terms of rendering. So there's nothing to complain here. And if we are now in a modern UI app, you can already see these run buttery smooth and there's nothing really to add here since we are using the Intel i5 for the 2010 and it does a really good job. If we check the browsers real quick, here we are in Internet Explorer and of course it is the smoothest one out there, also the fastest in terms of rendering and you can use it with the touch screen, touch pad or the mouse the same way. If we check Chrome, Chrome is quite smooth but just not on an Internet Explorer level. Using it with a mouse it is definitely enjoyable with a touch pad and touch screen Still good, but just not as good. If we check, for example, Firefox right now, you will see this is not the perfect experience. Using it with a mouse, it is fine, but using it with a touchscreen or touchpad, you will just see a lot of jankiness. Otherwise, what I have to tell you, you will get the typical 4210 Ultrabook performance as you do on most other Ultrabooks. You will also get 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is good enough for heavy multitasking, shouldn't be a problem at all. And all the typical usual stuff you usually can do on any Ultrabook, you can do on this as well. There are no limitations. And using the Intel HD 4400 graphics and quick sync, video editing is no problem. The final rendering, of course, does take a little bit longer than it does with a desktop grade CPU. Definitely a still enjoyable experience in overall. So I can't complain. It is as good as pretty much any other Ultrabook right now on the market. Let's talk about the battery life, heat and noise now, starting off with the charging times. After one hour of charging, you are at about 50%. An additional hour of charging will get you to 90%. And after two hours and 45 minutes, you will be at 100%. Solid outcome, maybe not the best one, but also nothing to bother about. As for the battery life, the good thing here is it is very consistent. I got pretty much the same outcome every time. The bad thing though, this outcome isn't really the best. I got four hours of constant use, but I would have at least wished for five hours. I used the brightness of 60% and maybe if you do lighter task and maybe dim the screen, you can achieve these, but still it is not the best battery life out there and slightly below average. As for the heat, the good thing here is the only part where it gets warm is here a little bit and using it on your lap, it won't get ever so warm that it would bother you. So everything's on the fine side here. As for the noise, everything is great. Most of the times it is completely silent and the only thing you will always, almost always hear is the spinning hard drive. That one is audible, but it is also not really loud or so. And in a normal loud environment, you won't ever, ever even notice it. Only in a silent room, it is something that could maybe bother you. The fans itself are very subtle and have a pleasant noise to it, but mostly aren't kicked in. Once they kick in, you can hear them a little bit, but not in any way that it would bother you. At full load, they spin louder, but still in a way that you can accept at all, no problems here. So in overall, battery life slightly below average, in terms of heat, quite okay, and the noise pretty much on par with all the best ones out there, and nothing really to complain. There are better ones out there, but it is still, still very good. Let's get to the software part, and this is something where I don't have to spend a lot of time, because 
Windows 8.1 as we know it, no problems at all. It was very stable, I didn't have any freezes, any bugs or anything else. Everything out of the box worked quite nice. We have a pretty usual amount of Dell apps pre-installed, nothing to really bother about. I would recommend though to uninstall the pre-installed Mac FE virus software because it just bothers the performance and it's not really something really helpful. The only other thing I want to mention here is the capacitive stylus, but also it is just a capacitive stylus. So don't expect any enhanced features at all. No palm ejection, no pressure precision or something like that. So keep it as it is, it's quite a nice bonus. You can tug it in and it doesn't disturb you if you don't want to use it, but it's still okay to have. Like I said, everything is on the fine side here. Let's talk about value now. We have three different models here. We have a basic model for $600, which I can really recommend because it doesn't have a full HD screen. So I would definitely recommend to get the 799 model or the 999 model with the SSD and the i7. This one for 799 has an i5 and a spinning hard drive with 500 gigabytes. And the value in my opinion is quite good for what you get because you get a 30.3 inch IPS display. You get an overall nice package, very quite solid, good build materials, very nice port layout and no real major flaws, a good sound. So everything is there. The only things you could maybe take a look at are some other competitors maybe not as much on the convertible side but on the laptop side there are a few just to mention maybe the lenovo yoga 2 pro which in my opinion is a little bit inferior to this because i just didn't like the screen so much because of the scaling and this high-pitched whistle tone and the keyboard wasn't also one of my favorites. Also one thing to definitely recommend would be the Dell XPS 13, which I haven't reviewed yet, but from all what I see for the price of a starting point at 799 or maybe 899, you will get a really high-end device, but therefore for this price point, it will hard to beat this device. It is quite nice. Maybe not the best one out there and you have to also consider what you want from it. If it gives you all you want for the price you pay, there's nothing wrong with this device. It offers all you should need and even more. But maybe there are a few devices that offer you something you would like more for the same price. So keep that in mind. We are getting close to the finish line because it's recap time. So let's start with the design and build quality. Everything really good, but just not great or extraordinary. Nothing really wrong. Nice placement of the ports. Good amount of ports because you get one USB more than you usually get and the build quality overall is nice and the package is a really elegant one. So nothing to really complain, but there is room for improvement left. As for the display, really nice, a really good one, but just not great. There are better ones out there. I think a little bit of the contrast is lacking, but otherwise the overall quality is still very good. As for the sound, pretty much the same, also very good. And the only thing that could slightly be a weaker part is the muffled travel otherwise it was still great because it was quite loud and everything else was also nice as for the performance as i already said it typical ultrabook performance don't expect anything more or less you will get exactly what you pretty much get on all the other ones out there except for the slightly slower spinning and audible hard drive as for the battery life slightly below average still heat is good nothing to really complain and the noise levels are pretty much on a higher than average level and competing with most others here as for the value i think for 800 dollars you get a quite nice package because you still have the extra functionality with the tablet stand mode presentation mode and so on so this is something to keep in mind because most others just don't offer this so it is definitely to keep an eye out for. As for the competition, there are definitely a lot of competitors out there these days, you have to remember. Dell XPS 13, the, you know, the new Lenovo Yoga line and so on, but those are higher priced and you have to remember what you get here. For the price, you get a nice, really almost flawless device and nothing to really complain about. So my final thought on this device would be for a price of $800, it is quite hard to beat because it is overall very solid, has no major flaws and does all it does in a very high quality level. Maybe just not the best one, but you also have to remember it costs about $800 or maybe $1,000. All the really better ones out there are at $1,200 or $1,300 or more. And you also have the added functionality with the different stands and so on. So keep this in mind. Overall, it does nothing wrong, but it also does nothing really extraordinary. Still, definitely one to keep out to look for if you are looking for something like that. It's done. We crossed the finish line and we are at the end of this review. And if you liked it, please rate and comment. Subscribe to my channel and tell me anything else if you want to. So until next time, bye.
I'll be back.